I was at the Tilburg Pen Show. I ran into a very kind set of people uh, from Scrittura Elegante. I'll, I'll put a, a link to their store in the description of the video. I was chatting with them, it was a very pleasant conversation, and uh, they gave me a pen to review, which is very nice. Uh, because it's a pen that I know is very popular. So, thank you, Scrittura Elegante. If you want one, you can always see if you can pick one up there. And, incidentally, when it comes to this country, I have found the best price for this pen at that website. So, more reasons to go there. Pens by Conklin. Now, Conklin, as you may know, is an, an older American company, so I thought I would uh, read a little bit from Fountain Pens of the World, the authoritative book on pens, as far as I'm concerned. Just to give you a little bit of the history of the company, all right? Conklin. Roy Conklin, an inventor from Toledo, Ohio, formed the self-filling fountain pen company in 1898 with the help of some local friends. The previous year, he had invented a self-filling pen called the Crescent Filler, now recognized as the world's first practical self-filling pen. The mechanism is simple. A metal crescent which projects from the pen barrel is attached to the sack's pressure bar. The sack deflates when the crescent is depressed. After filling, a locking ring is moved into place to avoid depressing the crescent accidentally. After three years of operation, Roy Conklin's company was incorporated under the name Conklin Pen Manufacturing Company with a capital stock of six thousand uh, dollars. Go on about the it goes on about the uh, the history of the, the other pens they made, the glider, the durograph, uh, etc. And then the end of the company. In the summer of 1938, the Conklin Fountain Pen Company was sold to a Chicago syndicate. A few months later, the new owners moved the company to Chicago and began production of an inexpensive fountain pen priced at $2.75. Production of, the, of all the more lavish models was officially discontinued. An advertisement of 1945 promotes the Conklin Glider with a 14 karat nib, visible gauge and single stroke filler. It was offered throughout the 1940s, but the company continued to decline and production stopped shortly after Conklin's 50th anniversary. Thus, although the company's innovation and technological achievements had at times been a decade ahead of those of its larger competitors, for marketing or financial reasons, it failed to survive. Now, this is one of those companies that has uh, gone under uh, quite a while ago, as you can see, but that was revived. Conklin was revived, just like while Eversharp was revived and just like Caveco was revived, okay? Different pens, no real crescent fillers anymore, although that may be a little bit debatable, but in any case, we have all new pens, and I have already reviewed some of them, and today we're going to have a look at the All-American. So, whip out your corn dog, and let's get All-American. The pen, the box. This is the Conklin box that we've seen before, and I have to admit, I kind of like these boxes. There's a little cardboard uh, thing. But the box I like. I like the cut-off corners. I don't know, I, I just think it looks neat. It's nice, I don't know if it looks looks black on the camera, but it's a very, very dark blue, very, I would say, navy, uh, with a nice gold imprint, established 1898, but, I mean, it's not really the same company anymore, right? It may have been established, but it's not, not the same company. The legendary name for fine writing instruments. In the box, a couple of items, uh, there is a, uh, a little Conklin uh, card and uh, filling instructions. Uh, there is the uh, Conklin International Collectors Club and uh, some other information. There is a black and a blue cartridge in a tiny little Ziploc bag and of course there is the actual pen. The little bed for the pen comes out but there's nothing below it. I guess you could put the paperwork below that. I like it. Nice soft material, has the Conklin logo uh, imprinted there again. So I think it, it, it's, it's, it's a cute box. And then we have the pen. Now, the pen I have seen here for as much as 105 euros, I've, but Scrittura Elegante sells it for 82.50, which, as I said, is the lowest price, best deal I've, I've seen for this pen. Okay, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Let's start. The very top of the cap, right there. There's nothing. It's all the same material. Uh, you have the uh, the nice gold-colored clip with Conklin on it, and then you have the barrel. Uh, it just goes down. And I I have to admit, I like this particular pen. I like I like the 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 
finish a lot. Uh, I'm assuming it's acrylic, but it's called Sunburst Orange, and of the various finishes you have, I think this is the prettiest. So even though this is not a pen with a lot of features when it's it's capped, uh, I do really like the, the color and the material really is quite nice and has some depth to it. The cap unscrews and one of the things I really appreciate, appreciate about this pen is that the section is the same material as the barrel and cap. I always think that adds to a pen, it just looks very neat. Uh, then we have the nib. It's pretty bright out, so I'm trying to make this not catch uh, the light too much, but it's a silver colored nib and it's uh, it has a, a little gold oval on it with Conklin and it says Toledo USA and on the side there is a, a nib grade, so in this case M for medium. The section goes up there, or goes down, I should say, tapers down and then flares out a little bit. And we have, of course, large threads for the cap, and then we have a converter. Now, one thing that I particularly enjoyed about this converter is that it's one of the screw-in converters. I've always enjoyed that because they seem to be a little less prone to just accidentally coming out. Uh, so it's a very secure system, which I like. In the hand, uh, it's, a, it's a nice enough pen, uh, not huge, but it's by no means small. I think this is a, a nice size, uh, and of course, I forgot to show you that. Um, I also don't know how well the camera picks it up, but right there is an engraving, blind engraving that says uh, Conklin Trademark, Toledo, Ohio, USA, All American, the name of the, uh, the particular model. Does it post? It does post, it becomes rather large, I would say, and it's a little wobbly just because of the shape of the barrel, but you can make this post if you really want to. Although, as I said, I, I do think this pen is large enough to use comfortably unposted. Very flexy uh, clip. A little bit too much fun with that. Attached in one point. Uh, but it, it seems to work and of course the advantage to that is that you can push down here To open the clip. It's a neat system. It's simple, but it works And if you want to put it in a, a breast pocket or something, it's very easy to operate that. I always enjoyed that kind of system Okay There you have it the pen. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, I Love this finish. I think when it comes to this model To be honest, there's nothing in this particular model. I have not seen before shape-wise or size-wise or but I do like this orange a lot it's I would say it's almost Delta-esque of course Delta uses celluloid this is an acrylic but it really looks neat beautiful bright orange I also like that care was paid attention was paid to the overall finish of the pen threads are a little sharp but this step down right there between well actually it's still barrel and barrel because the section on screws there But this step down for the cap is not sharp. It's it's at least on this particular pen It's nicely rounded off. You can feel it a little bit, but it's it's well done. I like that <clears throat> I like the attention paid to the clip. It all works. It all works. The pen writes now That's where we get into things. I don't like so much it's not a super cheap pen, uh, even if you get it for 8250 that's still quite a bit of money. And I did have some issues with the pen, the way this pen wrote. Uh, first of all, you will see that in the writing sample. I cannot call this a medium nib. It's a fine at best. It's really quite fine. And it's, I mean, it's actually engraved M. So I don't think anyone made a mistake but it's really rather a fine nib. Now, that could be this single nib, and any other nib you buy will be a perfect medium, but I found it very fine. Added to that is the fact that the pen was very dry. It wrote very dryly, a, a problem I've experienced before with other Conklin models. Uh, so, that seems to be a bit of a trend. Very dry, and the nib is super rigid. It's very, very hard. There's almost no yield. So as you write, it doesn't give a sort of a, a bouncy feel when the, then the, when the tines spread a little bit. 
it's really rigid. Is that a bad thing? For me, it may be, because I like a nib that has a little bit of yield when you write with it. But for other people, it may be positive, because there are many people who like really rigid pens because they, I don't know, it gives you a feeling of being precise or, or it, it's easy when you have to print, what we call that, a a write on carbon paper or something, if anyone still does that. Um, but it, ca it can have advantages. For me, I don't like it so much. It, it makes the, the nib feel rigid and I don't enjoy the writing experience that much if a, a, a nib is this hard. Having said that, that's a bit of a personal qualm because as I said, some people will really enjoy that. My bigger issue is that the nib grade seems to be a size off. I really think this is a fine. And if you combine that with a dry nib, then it gets, it looks even finer. Then you basically is having a fine nib. So, now, the issue as always with reviewing is I only have one of these. It could be an issue particular to this pen. It could also be that it's a more structural issue with the nibs Conklin uses. I don't know where they source their nibs. It doesn't really matter. All I know is that in this case, the M is not an M. That's it. Uh, one final thing I wanted to say was I do like the nib design. I find the simple silver nib with a little bit of gold highlight in the Conklin name and then Toledo USA. I find it very clean looking. And I, I again, it's a bit bright, so I don't know how well you can uh, see this, but I, I find this to be a very uh, uh, pleasant, simple, clean nib design. I like that. And of course, the crescent shaped breather hole. I don't know if that's a reference to the, the crescent filler they did, but I like it. I think it has stuff going for it. So, there you go. If you want one, of course, you can always check out Scrittura Elegante. Again, link in the description below. I hope this was useful. Measurements of the pen, as well as high resolution pictures, will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. And now we need to do a writing sample. And that's all I see. I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Conklin All American. The nib is medium. And the ink is Pelikan Edelstein Mandarin. Okay. There's definitely some feedback as you write. Um, fast writing. Performs relatively well, but again, I just see that it skips. That's more so the issue, and even with some pressure, I, I mean, I would say something like this, it's hard to tell, but I mean, I would say that is a medium line. It's just a fine nib. And when it comes to wetness, I mean, it has startup issues. You see that once it flows, it's flowing okay, but it's, it's not an ultra wet nib. Line variation. You can definitely squeeze some out, which may appeal to some people. You also get railroading fairly quickly, but I'll try to slow down. There's definitely some line variation to be had. For those of you who enjoy reverse writing... Oh, sorry. Writing. It gets very dry to a point where the nib <coughs> barely doesn't dry. Uh, sorry, doesn't write. And there you have it. So, a kind thank you to Scrittura Elegante. This uh, pen shall be given away in serious nibbage. So, not right now. Hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye.